is part two of our notes on slavery, and today we're going to be focusing on the abolitionist movement. The primary aspect of the abolitionist movement, or the primary people and events we're going to be looking at, is uh, Nat Turner and his slave revolt in 1831, uh, William Lloyd Garrison, Frederick Douglass, the book Uncle Tom's Cabin, written in 1852, uh, the Grimke Sisters, the Underground Railroad, and a couple of the new political parties that form during this time period. Now, Nat Turner's Rebellion, this was a rebellion, it was a slave revolt that was started by a slave, Nat Turner. He was born a slave in Virginia in 1800, and he had been Christianized by his owners. He was very gifted at being a preacher. He believed he was chosen to lead the people from bondage. And this goes back to that biblical view of Moses leading the Jews from Egypt. So Nat Turner kind of embodies that sentiment that he gets out of the Old Testament. The rebellion is going to pl take place August 1831, uh, and it's going to be what prompts the rebellion is going to be a total eclipse. Uh, Nat Turner sees this as a signal from God that the revolt is here and the revolt is now. Nat Turner and 80 of his followers are going to start attacking plantations throughout the state, and they're going to kill about 60 whites in the process. Eventually, Nat Turner is going to be captured by state and federal troops. The aftermath of this event is that, well, Turner is going to hide for weeks, uh, but eventually he is going to be captured, he's going to be tried, and he's going to be executed. And he's executed, he is hung. And then some sources say he is also skinned uh, to add to the uh, brutality of the event, the event all around. Uh, whites to retaliate are going to go around and they're going to kill many that they believed are involved with the revolt, uh, and that's going to equal close to about 200 blacks. Many of these are going to be innocent. But what this is going to do in the South is it's actually going to strengthen the resolve to defend slavery. Uh, slaves are not going to have any more rights to education. In fact, in some states, it's actually going to be outlawed that they be taught anything, and that includes Christianity. Uh, and on top of this, militia units are going to start to reform in the South to combat these future slave revolts. Moving into some other uh, and more prominent abolitionists, such as William Lloyd Garrison. Uh, Garrison was often deemed the most radical of the abolitionists. He ran a weekly newspaper that he contributed to called The Liberator. Uh, now, Garrison wanted immediate emancipation. Not tomorrow, not in a year, not gradual, right now. Uh, Garrison is responsible for founding the England Anti-Slavery Society in 1832, and he then, the next year, he forms the American Anti-Slavery Society, which is in 1833. Uh, Garrison was known for attacking the government and local churches for not condemning slavery, and it's because of his radical attitudes that he's going to alienate himself among white abolitionists. Another of the famous abolitionists is Frederick Douglass. Douglass was born a slave. He could read and write. He was well-educated. Uh, and there's the long story about how he went to work on the docks, and then he escaped at north and made his way to England, where slavery was not allowed, and two women bought his freedom, and he was able to return to the United States. When he gets back to the States, Garrison, knowing his story, he's going to start to sponsor Douglas. For a while, Douglas actually works at the Liberator. But because Douglas wants abolition through politics, he wants to do it through government and legislative, he's not quite as radical as Garrison is. So he's actually going to break with Garrison and start his own paper, the Northern Star. And in case you're wondering what the Northern Star reference is, why, why I asked you if, what you think the significance is of his paper title, the Northern Star is that point in the sky that slaves look to in order to find their freedom the Northern Star would take them north to Canada. All right, another important aspect is the books that obviously came out at this time. Anything written by the abolitionists is worth looking at, but the most important thing we can look at is Uncle Tom's Cabin, written by Harriet Breacher Stowe. Harriet was an ardent abolitionist. Her book, Uncle Tom's Cabin, written in 1852, was... Uh, both famous and infamous. People loved it and people hated it. It was an instant bestseller. It sold more than one million copies. However, it has a very melodramatic pl plot and the uh, characters are very much stereotyped. What she does, though, is she portrays slavery as a moral struggle rather than a political one, as it had often been seen. No more of the balance of power and all these other things, but just view slavery as morally wrong. Um, However, she never really visited the South. She based her stories on accounts. Some of the accounts are loose, and then she actually defends her stance, saying that she used numerous other scholarship and researches or resources uh, to verify that she was correct. It's found out later that she actually hadn't read any of these books at all until way after she published her book. Now, there were some different reactions to the book. The North increased their protests against the fugitive slave law. Obviously, they reacted to the book uh, in what they saw as positive and that slavery had to be ended. The South saw this as a, an attack on the South as a whole, uh, that a viewpoint that the South was morally wrong. So you could see more of the divide. Two more important abolitionists were the Grimke sisters, who were daughters of a South Carolina slave owner, 
and they are famous for writing the book An Appeal to Christian Women of the South. Garrison was actually a supporter of these two women, and they are often criticized for taking up a man's role in leadership and reform. And then one of the most famous of the abolitionists and most famous events involving slavery uh, is the Underground Railroad. The Underground Railroad is a secret network of people assisting runaway slaves. It's not actually a railway underground like we would think of a subway, but more of just a network, a system of routes and houses and places that slaves can stop and hide at in order to make their way up north in order to get to Canada where they can get their freedom. Conductors of the Underground Railroads hid the fugitives. They provided them with food, clothing, and then would escort them to their next destination or their next station uh, to kind of keep in line with that railroad theme. Harriet Tubman is by far one of the most famous of the conductors. She was born a slave and she suffered uh, under slave brutality. She actually took a blow to, a head, blow to the head at one point from a blunt object. She eventually would run away to Philadelphia and secure her, her freedom through various means. It is said she would make up to 19 trips to the south over the course of several years and help around 300 slaves escape by way of the Underground Railroad. And now we're going to look at some of the new political parties that evolved during this time or came about. Uh, because keep in mind, you've had some kind of – this evolution of political parties over time since the United States has started. You'd always had the Republicans and you had the Federalists, but then the Federalists went away. And it was just the Republicans, and the Republicans went through a name change where they became Democratic Republicans, and then they became just Democrats. Well, now it's the Democrats and the Whigs. But over the Kansas-Nebraska Act, what we looked at in the last notes, the Whigs are going to dissolve, and that leaves room for new parties to emerge, uh, these being the Know Nothing, the Free Soul Party, and eventually the Republican Party. The Know Nothing Party, also known as the American Party, were extreme nativists that didn't like foreigners or Catholics. And right there it says WASP, White Anglo-Saxon Protestants. They had secret handshakes and passwords adding to their peculiarity. Their members would answer questions about their activities, often with, I know nothing. The party is officially formed in 1854, and I would love you to Google their involvement with the Washington Monument. Another party that was founded in 1848 is the Free Soul Party. They opposed slavery's expansion, and a lot of these guys are going to migrate into Kansas and Nebraska to try to stop the extension of slavery. Now, just because they're Free Soul and anti-slave does not necessarily mean they're for black and white equality. Uh, a lot of the times, these guys thought that blacks not coming into an area was a good thing so that more jobs would be available to white people. In 1848, they run Martin Van Buren for president, and they gained 10 percent of the popular vote. This number demonstrates a percentage of Americans that were adamantly opposed to slave expansion. However, they were free soilers, not abolitionists. And finally, the Republican Party, founded in February of 1854. Northern Whigs, anti-slave Dems, and some free soilers met, and they wanted to form a new political party. On July 6th, the Republican Party is formed in Jackson, Michigan, on their second meeting. Horace Greeley is considered the founding member. The Republican Party adamantly opposed the Kansas-Nebraska Act uh, immediately from their foundation. They're going to embrace and entertain a wide range of opinions. They're going to resurrect the Missouri Compromise, keep in mind where it had been overturned by the Kansas-Nebraska Act and also declared unconstitutional by the Dred Scott case. Some Republicans are absolutely radical abolitionists, but keep in mind that abolitionists, abolitionists are still a minority. For instance, Abraham Lincoln was a Republican. Abraham Lincoln was not an abolitionist. However, most Republicans, if not all Republicans, adamantly opposed the extension of slavery. The main competition to the Republicans was the Know Nothing Party out of the gate because nativism had really gripped America. This ends our notes on abolitionists and political parties that formed during this time. Make sure you go back and look at these and uh, print the notes off the class materials page. Have a good day. Steal away. Steal away, steal.